One of my biggest pet peeves is when in movies they don't say goodbye before they hang up the phone. But another pet peeve I have as a cybersecurity professional is malware. So the first thing you're wondering is, why does Ryan have two mics? Why does he have this one and this one? Uh, this is actually completely redundant. Uh, I don't need it. Uh, the second thing you're probably wondering is, what is this video really even about? Well, we set up a honeypot a couple videos ago, and now we're gonna look at what our honeypot has caught. And by our honeypot, I mean my specific one that I have running in North Virginia right now. A cool thing to note here is that the, the location typically matters. If I put a honeypot, let's say in Seoul. Seoul. You know, I'm going to get different results than my North Virginia one. Um, but we're going to dive right in and see what we got. So to dive right in, I've been leaving this honeypot running for a couple days. As I said before, it's located in North Virginia. Uh, and as you can see, I got quite a few attacks, right? This honeypot's really cool because it has a bunch of different micro pots, right? Or miniature honeypots, right? That are all testing for different things. So if I go, I'm going to go to the overall dashboard. You'll see pretty quickly that the amount of attacks I have are pretty extensive, right? We could see overall, what is that? 19, 21, 22, 25, probably around like 25,000 attacks in total, right? Using all of our honeypots cumulatively. So pretty interesting stuff. Uh, we could see right here, all of the different CVEs, the common vulnerability. Um, what is CV? We can see right down here, we have all of the different common vulnerabilities and exposures listed out, right? We could actually open these links and it'll give us some information of the attack that was attempted. Now I'm going to actually go to a specific honeypot. I'm going to go to my Cowrie honeypot, and we're actually going to take a look at some malware that has been uploaded or at least attempted to be uploaded to my system. So I'm going to go to dashboard, going to go to Cowrie. All right, and the Cowrie dashboard is pretty interesting. Uh, it actually looks at brute force attempts a lot. Right, so it's looking for uh, brute force attempts via SSH. We can see that we have the username attempts here, the password attempts here. Right, all pretty interesting stuff. Some of which is not as nice as other passwords. Right, that was pretty mean. Uh, and they, <laughs> okay, username was mother, last name was uh, was rude. But the cool thing, if we clear this out, da -da -da, let's get rid of that is we could actually see the hashes for some malware that has been put on my system, right? So I see down here, we have top downloads. This is items that people actually have tried to upload to my honeypot, thinking once again, it's a real victim. All we need to do here, if we want to analyze this a bit further, is we could copy this hash. We could go into virus total. So I'm just going to go virus, ooh, virus total. Throw it into virus total under search, right? And we can find some information. I think I cut off the B. Let me check. Yeah, there's a B in front of the nine. And then we hit enter. Oh, I did not cut off the B. It cut it off. Ah, it was tilted to the right. Now we hit enter. What? Okay. We do this one more time. What do I got? Oh, yep. Classic mistakes. Copy and pasting errors are always the hardest in the cybersecurity uh, industry. So if we go to virus total, we can see of 61 vendors, security vendors, 29 of them said this is bad, right? And typically if you have even a couple of them, like let's say two or three, even, honestly, even one, if you have any vendors saying that this is malware, it's usually worth looking into, right? In this case, we have a consensus of almost half of the vendors considering this to be a Trojan. Specifically, a lot of them are finding it to be a minor, right? What is a minor? A lot of times what has happened in recent years is that people will try to upload malware to your systems that will actually use it to mine Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, right? The reason for that is what better way to make free money than to use other people's resources to mine crypto coins, right? You know, it's pretty, uh, pretty intuitive for attackers. If we look at details, we could find some of the different hashes. We have the MD5 hash here, the SHA-256. This is actually what we provided. Uh, and then we just all have all those different lists, uh, lists out here. The other cool thing I like about virus total is it tells us which vendors did not pick it up, right? Yeah. McAfee doesn't look like it did too well. I think that might be a specific subset of McAfee though. No, yeah, actually just McAfee didn't pick it up, right? So you could see all of the ones that didn't pick it up. Uh, some of them that are just 
completely unable to even process this file type, right? Because this is a SHA-256 hash, right? And we get all of these different details. So that's just a quick video to look into the honeypot, see what we got. Um, so I hope you all found this interesting and useful. You know, if you all want to spin up your own honeypots and observe the attacks you get, I highly encourage it as well. Thank you for tuning in. I'll talk to you all later.